What's up, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla spy in the overall markets. I want to break down what's happening with the economic calendar moving forward. Talk about some new developments in the charts. So what you should be watching for as time goes on. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75. The offer ends very soon in just about two weeks from now. Anyways, now let's talk about how the market is looking. So looking at Tesla, I just think that right now, we're doing a pretty good job at holding up quite well. We're trying to turn very, very nicely on the four-hour time frame, and we're doing a good job at approaching our 20 EMA. Now, the question is, what's going to affect the way this stock is going to move? We do have some news, not to mention some economic data. So I believe it's very important for me to go over that first before I break down these charts. So what's happening for tomorrow? The answer is tomorrow is going to be Thursday, October 17th, 2024. Please remember that at one hour before the market opens at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have some important data coming out. We have the notorious initial jobless claims and jobs numbers coming out, not to mention industrial production, industrial manufacturing numbers also coming out at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the main time to look for volatility will be at this time, one hour before open, we have some jobs numbers coming out. This may cause some volatility. We also have the Philly Fed employment and new orders numbers, which isn't as significant as initial jobless claims, in my opinion. And then the manufacturing and industrial production numbers will be very important. This will give us more insights about how the sector is looking for the economy for the month of September. So look for some volatility at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or a little bit after the market opens. That's when the move is going to pan out. So expect a big move in the broader markets, which could affect Tesla. Watch, see what happens upon market open. So 8.30 a.m. and 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's New York time for those who are around other countries. It's in America. The New York Stock Exchange follows that time. So look at that for some high volatility. Besides that, there's not really much else coming out. We just have a couple of bill auctions, the four and eight week bill auctions. So look and see how this ends up affecting the markets. Uh, but that's what we're seeing for the markets thus far. A lot of data before market open. And then I also want to mention that as far as our economic data goes and our earnings, just know that for Thursday before the market opens, we have TSMC announcing its earnings that could affect semiconductors. So get ready for that. And then for others out there, I just want to mention we have Netflix announcing its earnings after the market closes. This could have a much more profound effect on tech. So be ready for that just to be safe. So look for some interesting volatility tomorrow. Whatever Netflix announces is going to be very important after market close. And I think that this is going to be very, very important. Uh, for others out there, um, I just want to mention that uh, TSMC may affect NVIDIA and the others. So expect some volatility for semiconductors. So we'll see how that goes. Now, for other pieces of news, the market has tried to climb up higher. So the market dipped a little bit yesterday after the Israel news and after ASML announced their earnings. They kind of leaked it early on in the website by mistake. Uh, that still led to the market seeing a big reaction. Uh, so it was that factor, not to mention the whole Israel news. But right now, the market held its key supports as earnings have come out pretty nicely today. And the market's attempting to rebound because we saw buyers defend our key supports, which I'll talk about in just a couple of minutes. So going into tomorrow, we do look a little bit more bullish, at least technically speaking, but we'll see what happens with more earnings and such. Now, as far as Tesla goes, I made a video about this, just to be very blunt about this. Uh, Latin America is an area of, around the world that should not be just kind of like overlooked because 90,000 EVs were sold there in just 2023 alone. So it's actually a pretty big market if you take the entire Latin America as a whole. So that's why it's very important that Tesla is launching a supercharger network there. This is opening the doors for more sales. Even if they get an extra few tens of thousands of sales per quarter, you know, in those regions, that could help them a lot. And this is a growing market. So I think it's something we should not overlook. And this could help their sales to a large extent. Tesla sales have not been the best because of the high interest rate environments. But as time goes on, interest rates will be going down, which will help Tesla. For the time being, there are going to be negative substantial effects because of these higher interest rates. So that's why I think it's important for them to expand and get ready for these markets. Tesla's pre Tesla is preparing to expand in South America as they've opened the supercharger network in Chile. And as they start expanding more and more, it's going to be even more bullish. So I think this is a good piece of news for the long term. And they're getting their hands in there, which is going to give them exposure and more potential growth as time goes on. On top of this, Goldman Sachs and all these other analysts such as Cantor Fitzgerald, 
uh, HSBC, a few more. They all gave Tesla a, a neutral slash hold rating. So we're seeing this throughout the market. That's why Tesla started dipping. We saw expectations shift after the RoboTaxi event. That's why Tesla was turning more bearish. The price risk ratio has been dipping a little bit as Tesla has been losing some strength. Uh, it's still, it's trying to base here. So we're starting to see some buyers try and defend it, but it's not that strong. And then historically, Thursdays are green about 47% of the time. And then the more volatility at 11 a.m., not to mention 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, October is historically a weak month for Tesla. So far, it's been pretty weak for us. But we'll see if November improves as that tends to be a stronger month. Besides that, that's what I'm seeing, at least on the news thus far, at least for Tesla. And then finally, don't forget that volume is at about 49 million. That's uh, a little bit over half of what we typically get. So very low volume sideways price actions we're seeing for Tesla thus far. So now with that being said, let's focus on the technical side of things and break down what I think is going to happen going into tomorrow. So as far as Tesla goes, I just want to mention that Tesla has this resistance at 222. If that breaks, we're looking for 224.8 close to our 20 EMA. Our support is at 219. This is a 219, 220 range is our support. If that fails, let's look for 217 and then 215 all the way down here. Now, with this nice looking curl that's happening to Tesla, we're doing a good job at holding up. And right now, it's looking more like buyers are slowly trying to push the share price a little bit up. I say that because of the fact that we are holding up above 220 quite well. We're trying to push closer to our 20 EMA. So I think the odds are favoring Tesla pushing for 225. I think we may slowly make our way up higher, at least from a technical standpoint. That's going to be the most likely case. Now, am I extremely bullish? Not necessarily. This is just a temporary move, but there could be a big move also depending on the data that comes out for tomorrow. So we'll just have to see how things end up going. But thus far, I think we're doing a good job at holding up and we'll see how things end up progressing as time goes on. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I think my trading view is glitching. Just let me reload the page for one second, guys, then we'll see how things kind of like uh, go on from here. I just want to say that the market's doing a good job at holding up. When we actually look at technicals, uh, Tesla is now getting dragged by this because buyers ended up coming out to defend. There's a very, very good chance that they will help Tesla as well. So anyways, going back to Tesla, I just want to mention that uh, buyers are continuing to be present. When you look at the daily chart, we have this big gap to fill, but in order for us to fill that gap, it depends on earnings, which is coming out for next week. Uh, so basically what happened was Tesla was trying to base at this 214 to 215 area. That's been holding Tesla up right here. And we could attempt to go higher. We'll have to see if we break this resistance or not. But I think there's a good chance we try to test this high all over again. So going back to the four hour time frame, what is my prediction for Tesla? What do I think is going to end up panning out? And here's my answer. I think that going into tomorrow, we're going to see some very, very choppy price action. But with the data coming out, Tesla might slowly try to push up closer to its 20 EMA. So there could be a test of about 225 and a move back down with some consolidation. But this is going to lead to a very, very big move very soon possibly approaching earnings. So get ready for all these interesting pieces of volatility. So I anticipate that Tesla is going to most likely trade sideways tomorrow then try to push closer to about the high of the day, very close to 225 before it comes back down and continues to consolidate. For others out there, we also happen to have SPY. I want to call out SPY very, very carefully because we see a lot more developments as well on this. So as far as SPY goes, I want to mention that on the four hour time frame, we have a very important support right here. When I zoom out of the charts, check this out, guys. Basically, when you go back here, we have these key supports. So back over here on the chart, notice that we dipped all the way down to about the 540 area in September. Then we got bought back up. We held our 20 EMA here. We bounced off of it, bounced off of this. We got a small sell-off in early October because of seasonality, and we held our 50 EMA nicely. And since then, we've been continuing to uption holding our 20 EMA and doing a pretty good job. In my personal opinion, I think that um, there's a good chance that SPY continues to hold up at the 20 EMA. Uh, if we continue to hold this, this will try to rebound again. So I want to make that very, very clear. The buyers came back to defend it. So that's very important. So here are the levels. If we hypothetically end up dipping tomorrow and we get bad news, look for 579.75 as our support to 20 EMA. If we lose that, we're looking for a dip back down to 576, close to our 50 EMA down there. For bullish, you want to see this basically break past 582. If that breaks, we have this imbalance to fill all the way up towards 584. My gut is telling me that SPY is going to most likely try to push up, up towards 582. If that holds, 584 is coming. So the odds favor the upside direction. But just, just to be safe, we'll be watching our levels. For others out there, we happen to have S, uh, ES. ES basically has support at 
58.70. We might dip a little bit to test that before it tries to bounce again. If we lose 58.70, look for a dip back down towards 58.50. If we hold the support, we could try to rebound for 5,900. If we dip here and then try to rebound, look for this resistance. So I think there's a good chance we kind of dip and bounce. And watch to see how we end up moving from here. For SPX, for those who are interested, we're also holding support nicely. It looks a little bit more bullish. Could dip a bit towards 58.3 before it tries to continue to push higher. And then we could be looking for a test of all-time highs again. NVIDIA is holding up nicely. It looks a little bit more bullish approaching TSMC's earnings, but we'll see how things go. The technicals favor upside as of right now. If we lose 133.76 tomorrow, look for a dip back down towards 130. If we hold above that, uh, we're looking for 135 as the next support. Above that, I think 137 is coming, followed by just under 140. There's a very, very good chance we push up closer to 140, and then we'll have to see how things go from here. But we're doing a great job thus far. For Bitcoin, we're trading sideways around the 68,000 area. If we end up losing basically the 67,000 here, we're looking for a dip back down. If we break past this resistance, we're looking for a big push. We may consult it at 68,000 before we try to push higher, but watch and see how this ends up going. Um, for others out there, we happen to have Tesla. Uh, Tesla's doing a good job, by the way. So if SPY and the QQQ try to rebound, this could also help Tesla. Tesla is also very news dependent, but just know that right now, the news has been quite decent for the last couple of days. There's a good chance Tesla will attempt to rebound after so much downside for the last couple of weeks. It is due for a small rebound, so it could be looking for 225. For others out there, we also have NQ. NQ is attempting to rebound, but it's not as strong as its uh, counterparts. So if we break past 20,350, we're looking for 20,400. If you reject, you're looking for 20,200. My gut tells me we dip a little bit more into the 20,200s before it tries to rebound, and we might be looking for 20,400 to be tested, but it's a little bit indecisive right now. The QQQ looks quite decent. Break 492, and we're looking for 494. Lose 489, and we're looking for a dip back down to 487, followed by lower levels. Because we're holding support here, it does look like it's going to be testing 492 tomorrow, which if it breaks, 494 is coming. So I favor a small little rebound for that potential target uh, very, very soon. Uh, so 492 should be coming for a small bounce, and we'll see how it moves from there. As far as Apple goes, Apple has support at 230. If 230 fails us, we're going back down to 228. Today, we dipped to 230 only to rebound, so the odds are favoring that this could dip a bit and start pushing back up to 233. I think we start testing 233 tomorrow for a small dip and then a bounce, and then we'll see if we make a lower high compared to the slow to start rejecting. So I'll be watching that as well very, very closely. Um, with that being said, though, that is it for the main ones I typically go over. Now let's just focus on a couple more. I'm going to be a little bit less meticulous now with the rest of these. Palantir has resistance at 42.38 and 41 as support. Looking at the rejection here, the odds are favoring that this may be dipping closer to about 41 flat. For Supermicro, this looks a little bit more bullish as we're holding support this depends on tsmc's earnings but so far we do favor upside a little bit more it's riding with nvidia so look at 47.5 is our support followed by 46.12 we have resistance at 50.73 my guts tells me it might dip a bit towards the 48 air then may try to rebound and get closer to 50 as of right now the chart is favoring the upwards direction for rivian we're just range bound here uh, we have 10.1 is our support and then 10.3 is resistance i think we might dip a bit and start pushing for 10.3 is the main level and i think the odds favor a little bit of a bounce for sofi sofi is dipping right here we have 10 as our main support if this fails us we're looking for basically this uh 9.6 areas our targets if we hold above 10 though we could rebound for basically 10.3 right now 9.6 is likely going to be tested we could dip a little bit more if 10 fails us so we'll have to see how things end up going uh, for the IW and Russell 2000, we basically have 227 as our resistance. If that breaks, we're looking for a bigger push closer to about 228 plus. If we end up losing support at 226, though, we could be dipping back down towards 224. With this nice looking structure, I think the odds are favoring us trying to push up for 230. So the IWM is doing a good job and looking more bullish. For others out there, we have AMD. AMD is looking a little bit more bearish, making lower highs. Uh, we have this resistance to watch around 157, and the support is going to be around this. 155 area so if 155 fails us we're going to be looking for dip for 152.5 not to mention the gap fill down here so as we're making lower highs i think the odds are favoring that this may dip towards 152.5 so there might be some downside for amd so we'll have to see how things end up progressing for arm we're doing a good job at holding up 152 is going to be our main support if that holds this could attempt to rebound and continue to push for 155 and if we lose 152 we could be dipping back down to 148 as we're holding our 20 ema i think the odds are favoring that this is going to push up for 155 so this looks like it has more potential for coinbase this looks a little bit more bullish if we were to reject off 212 we're looking for a move back down towards the 20 
205 area. If we break 212, we could be pushing higher. My gut tells me we might be dipping a little bit lower towards 207 before it tries to rebound for 212. So look for an attempt for 212 going into tomorrow. As far as the others go, such as like Amazon, I just want to call out that Amazon's doing a good job at holding up. It's entering a consolidation phase because we're approaching our very, very key EMAs right here. So I think the odds are favoring that 185 could be tested. We might be coming back down to 185. Then we could try to rebound after that. But but otherwise, we're just kind of like range bound. So we have to give this some time to, to kind of like develop. For Meta, we have a double top leg structure. We have resistance to watch for around 581. And we have this main support down here. Because of the double top, it looks a little bit more symmetrical. So I think the odds favor the downside. So unless we reclaim 581, I think the odds favor downside. We could rebound for 580, maybe a little bit below that before it tries to reject. So it may pop a bit to this 580 area, then reject back down. And we could be on our way down to about below 570s. 571 to 570 could be our target looking at this trend. So that's what I'm seeing, at least for the chart thus far, at least for Meta. We'll see how things progress moving forward. For Microsoft, we're making lower highs. You're kind of rejecting off our EMAs. So to be bullish, you want to break past 418. If we can't do that, I think the odds are favoring 414 or below. So I think we could be tipping back down to 410. So give that some time to develop. Google's making lower highs. We had a high here, came down, made a lower high, came down, made a lower high again and again and again. So the odds are favoring us coming back down to 165, in my opinion. For a little bit of a dip, it is showing some signs of contraction to me. Some runners are DJT. DJT is doing a good job at holding up as long as we're above 30. I think this is favoring 33 plus. 33 than 35 is our targets. It's looking more bullish thus far. For the VIX, the VIX is making lower highs. This, in essence, is looking bearish. So we have this gap to fill down here on 19.2. So I think that this is favoring the downwards direction. Uh, I think that we could be dipping more to fill this gap. We could pump uh, even more in the broader markets because of this trend. And I think the odds are favoring us coming down to fill this gap. But let me just make it very, very clear that with these dips that have been coming to the VIX, I don't think the move is uh, done quite yet. So that gives the market more upside potential. The market pumping is what's causing this to move this way. We have 3.995 as our main support right now on our 20 EMA. If this holds, we're looking for this gap fill all the way up towards 4.03. So we'll see how that ends up moving. And then the dollar index is still continuing to ride this uh, 20 EMA very, very nicely. I want to just say this, guys. Sometimes the mar in the market, there are correlations that could be made that pan out. And then, you know, even if they pan out the majority of the time, they don't always have to play out because correlation does not mean causation, right? That's what, uh, you know, you'll learn if you study like statistics or even uh uh you know econometrics and things like that so i'm trying to say that you know everyone would oftentimes say because the dollar is pumping the market has to crash but that's not always the case that does not always have to be the case and in this case that's not what's happening the dollar is pumping the market's also holding up well so we're just because the dollar is pumping now does not mean the market has to crash as of right now could this lead to the market crashing or dumping maybe but as of right now we're not seeing that so we have to just wait and see all i can really tell you is this the market is very tricky, and some days we could look bullish, other days we could look bearish. The best thing to do is you have to be very adaptive. You have to be able to uh, adapt to your environment. Just because the market is looking bullish now does not guarantee we're just going to pump all day tomorrow, even if that is the most likely move. You have to be ready for anything, so be prepared to adjust depending on how things end up looking, which is why I give you guys the bullish and bearish cases. However, as I'm looking at the charts, I do want to say that the most likely move is that we do try to go higher looking at the way the charts are developing, especially Tesla. So we'll see how things end up going. But with that being said, I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Make sure you watch the levels I called out to be safe. And just know that right now, the odds do favor the upper's direction. Even though I'm saying that, I do want to note that when I trade tomorrow, I'm going to be throwing my bias aside and I'm just going to be reading the charts. So even if even though I'm saying we do look more bullish and the odds do favor that, yes, I, I might be looking to see if that is the case and the odds do favor that, but that's just probability based. It's just what's most likely going to happen. It's not a 110% guarantee because I can't predict the next pandemic. I can't predict the next World War III. So that means you always have to be ready to kind of adjust, kind of prepare for what's going to be coming next. So please keep that in mind, guys, uh, and make sure you're very, very patient with the way that you end up trading. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning for another update. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day, night, or evening. Don't worry about Tesla's share price. Even if we do see more downside, it's not the end of the world as there's so much upside potential in the stock for the long term as they develop new technologies. So Tesla to the moon because the long term because the long term is still very bright despite the short term downside. And peace out.